Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Pyanodons. We have done a little bit of cotton gut breeding since the last episode, but not too much. Uh, just got all of our cotton gut, what are they called? Prandium Labs. Uh, we got those filled up with the cotton gut studs, as well as two of them for our reproductive complex. So I'm going to breed a few more um, cotton gut studs here. And then I will switch over to the regular recipe to make regular cotton guts, which will be for uh, making all the, well, bio products, I shall say. But yeah, we'll get a few more of these studs first. I think I already have enough stud pups, so I'm going to turn this one off. And then we'll just mostly focus on turning the stud pups into full-grown studs, which then will get us more of the modules in case we need some more Prandium Labs later, etc., etc. Um, I don't know how many I'm going to need. This was a total random guess that, you know, five would be enough. It's probably not enough, but it's at least a start. Five is a lot better than one or two. So at least I got that going for me. I'll hold the barrels. Oh yeah, barrels. We need barrels on a loop here, don't we? Did I get a bunch of barrels yet? No, I did not. Okay, let me go grab some barrels. Is enough even possible? No, no, it's really not. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so some updates, let's see. I have just started releasing the Ultimate Alchemy series for modded Minecraft. I know the crossover between Factorio fans and modded Minecraft fans is medium. It's not as big as I think it could be or even should be. The word should is dangerous, but I think a lot of people, I talked about this in my last podcast, a lot of people see modded Minecraft or just Minecraft in general as a kid's game because it's so popular among, you know, kids these days. Um, and I feel like it's almost like Fortnite where it gets this kind of almost meme status of like, oh, like people who play Minecraft or, but really like modded Minecraft is a totally different game. And I think a lot of Factorio players would enjoy modded Minecraft. Um, there are some key differences for sure, but I've really been enjoying, um, I've really been, in, what am I trying to get? I ran over here for something. I'll remember eventually. Oh, uh, barrels. But yeah, all that to say, I think a lot of Factorio players would enjoy modded Minecraft. So check it out. Uh, Ultimate Alchemy is an interesting one. It's a, a little bit of a shorter mod pack, so I am going to beat the mod pack. And then I am contemplating, not yet fully decided, but I am contemplating Greg Tech New Horizons after that, which is... Now, I know some of you are going to going to feel internally uncomfortable when you hear me say this, but it is way harder than Pyanodons. It is to Pyanodons what Pyanodons is to maybe Bob's Angels. It is that big of a pack. Uh, a guy online just beat it uh, who's been doing YouTube videos and it took him 6,600 hours. <laughs> As hard as Pyanodons is, it's not 6,600 hours hard. Now, I am just using time as a single measure of difficulty. I realize there are other metrics of difficulty than just time, but time is a pretty decent one, you know, given that, you know, there, what am I doing? Um, there's not too many ways you can objectively measure difficulty other than time. And it most certainly is what is that? That's about quadruple what it takes to beat py Pyanodons. Maybe triple, depending on your speed. So, yeah. All that to say, I'm considering attempting it. But, you don't you don't get into Greg Tech planning to beat Greg Tech. New Horizons. You get into it planning to enjoy it. I've seen some people say, it's a mod you play for life. And I think that's a good attitude to have towards it. And I think that even applies to smaller mod packs, such as um, Pyanodons, <laughs> which sounds weird to call that a smaller mod pack, 
But Pi is big enough that you can't just be like, oh, I'm just gonna go beat Pi. Like, that sounds fun. If your goal is beating it, it's really hard to enjoy the journey and you need to set these little goals for yourself. And I know a lot of people struggle with to-do list, but it gives you little hits of dopamine when you check things off your to-do list. And so it, it's worth eating your vegetables and actually creating smaller goals for yourself so that you can then accomplish those goals and feel that sense of accomplishment. Because if your goal is just, oh, I just wanna to get to logistic science, that's the next goal. And then as soon as you get logistic science, your next goal is, oh, I wanna get pi two, because that's the next science pack. After logistic science um, is pi two, you're like, oh, I wanna get pi two. Well, if that's your next goal, then you're going hundreds of hours before you've even finished that goal. And your brain just doesn't like that as much. So I highly recommend enjoying, focusing on how do I enjoy the journey? How do I set the small goals? And I, I believe that really helps with like the long-term enjoyment of these types of packs. Okay, so I'm just gonna ditch all of the stuff that we were using to make cotton gut studs into this chest here. Um, yeah, then I'm done ranting about other things and I do need to feed some of the regular pups into these buildings. How many do we need for you do seven grow up into six. So the runt of the litter does not make it. Or I guess you could see it as maybe the runt of the litter perseveres and it's actually his bigger brother that he had to take down and, and defeat in order to not be ruined. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, more barrels? I think we're okay on barrels, potentially. Just gonna make sure this is all working correctly. It looks like it is. Moon drops we set up in the previous episode. Uh, Strudel, you're saying, I think being the first person adds a lot of time to it. I don't know what you mean by that exactly. <laughs> what do you mean the first person? I think we're good on moon drops because now we are prioritizing the seeds and the seeds are backed up. So all all excess moon drops are going to making the old rabbits. Oh, oh, you mean first person as in the like three dimensional gameplay <laughs> for sure. Well, but you look at satisfactory and satisfactory doesn't take 600 or 6,000, sorry, I forgot a zero. <laughs> uh, you know, that's 3D in first person and you still, you know, it doesn't take anywhere near that many hours. So some of it, like, I, it's true that there is some tedium to setting things up in Factorio. I was talking about this in the podcast as well. You're responsible for every cubic meter of the world and that in and of itself takes a lot more time. Whereas in Factorio, you can just be like, boom, boom, and I've copied a build. And if you made it tileable, it's already connected to everything. And that's not the case, you know, do so setting things up is a lot more, it's a lot higher of a percentage of your time spent. Um, so if you don't, if you don't enjoy that at all, then yeah, you might want to maybe play an easier modded Minecraft or one that has blueprint mods available, which do exist in modded Minecraft. They're not quite as simple as uh, Factorio, but all right, look at that. 80 hours and 55 minutes. Bada bing, bada boom. Now, these are plopping. Okay, so I don't know why this belt goes all the way out here. Um, okay, so hold on. What we need... What we need... Yeah, I need the excess ones to go, so we kind of need an overflow. I mean, we didn't do this very well, because now this can go there. Now I don't have very much room for an overflow, so that'll be output priority right. And we'll do this just to build up a little bit of a stockpile for the reproductive complex. And then we'll go straight. And this will be our excess cotton guts for processing. 
GTNH has a blueprint mod. See, it probably only takes like 500 hours before you unlock it. <laughs> you think I'm being sarcastic. I might not be. I'm just guessing, but that might actually be right. Sweet. So we've got Cotton Guts done. That is a big step on the way to logistic science. That's what we're working towards right now. And we're in reach of this, this goal. So that's nice. We just have to fix are these numbers right. I think these numbers are right, actually. Now, what I really wish is you could have some check marks on these. That would be really cool. I know you have check marks on the pin mode, uh, but that's different because the pin mode. Well, it's just a different screen, so I guess that alone explains the thing. OK, so we've got five like that. This is all done. Check on that. And then this is what we're doing next. OK, so we need some star choruses as well as some other processing, yada, yada, yada. OK, so what I want to do is look at the other star core. Can you alt click on? No. Um, so what I want is to see what else is this used in and are we going to need it very soon? We need some for Pi 2, but not very many. And then it mostly looks like it's used in really complicated stuff that we're not going to see for a while. So I do think I can just chill with this amount of Sarkoris. So we'll pin this and work on getting this done. Did I ever decide fully on where logistic science is going? I think over here next to the batteries is what I decided. And we already set up a belt, I think, that had plasmids and something else on it. Am I, or was I just talking about that? Also worth noting, uh, at least on the day that I am streaming this, Foundry is releasing today, which is another factory building game that is focused on automation. It is a cuboid style like Minecraft, but it's very different than Minecraft. And the there was like an early access slash demo thing that came out a while back that I played and it was quite fun. So I recommend checking out Foundry if you're interested in more factory games. And I don't think I ever made the plasmid belt, did I? No, I did. It's right here. Plasmids and flora does go all the way to here. Oh, yeah. Look, I already did a lot of work. OK, cool. So then those just need to go vertical. And then we need another thing on the Petri dish belt, but we'll figure that out in a moment. First, we need to craft the buildings. So we need an incubator. We need bio factory. We need a reformer. Wow, I just I'm happy that I have all the parts for all these. I need a heat exchanger. I need five more Prandium Labs? What? Interesting. So when you do the summary, it includes the sub blocks in what it's showing you. That's very interesting. And potentially very unhelpful. Huh. I don't know if that's a bug or intended, but I don't think I like it because usually you build these, you know, one block at a time and you're only pinning these recipes. So you should only be seeing these buildings in the summary. That's really weird. 
So if I go up top, it shows me all the building. Like I want to be able to see both, right? I want to be able to see just the buildings for this. Kind of like, no, even that's showing everything. Weird. So is there no way to see just the factories that are on this level? It seems like there might not be. It, I think it always shows you the factories on this level and all of the sub blocks. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't like I said there. You do want to be able to do that, but I don't think only being able to do that is good because you also want to be able to just see these without these 12 being added in because I already built those and made that sub block. So I don't want those in my list being tallied up with these. Especially the reason where it's bad is if it's the same building, right? Because if I needed two reformers in here and three reformers here, it's just going to show me five reformers in this list. But this part of the block does not need five reformers. It only needs the two. The, those other three are in a different spot. So it's kind of weird that it tallies it. Anyway, I guess you can just count from here. <sighs> Helmod. So many complaints about Helmod. But I'm not going to rant about Helmod today. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, one thing we don't have is the moss. I am a little, a little bothered by moss. Um, where can we get that from even? Like the closest moss is really far away, I think. Because did we use moss at all in our cDNA stuff? I don't think we did. I think we just used seaweed. <laughs> I mean, I could just make moss, right? What's the cheapest moss recipe? We only need a tiny amount. Kind of annoying. Muddy sludge requires a couple buildings because you need the dirt and the water to make muddy sludge. And then carbon dioxide also needs a building or two. Carbon dioxide, we just have the coke. I do have coke over here. Hmm. To belt or not to belt? That is indeed the question. We have moss over here. Maybe I just use this moss. Where's this moss coming from? I think it's coming from our main moss production. What's up, Lodro? How's it going? Oh, you know what? We've got these... Ah. I will use the other side of our Vrauk cocoon belt for moss. So I'll do this. And we'll take moss off of this belt. Uh, let's see, this way. There we go. Ah, they changed a bunch of stuff in the mid late game nuclear recipes. Oh, you mean you mean in the versions that they said they're no longer going to make changes in? <laughs> uh, it's funny because it's true. Um yeah, at this point, it's almost a meme that they said they weren't going to change anything else. They have changed quite a few things. <laughs> Alright, so then we'll carry this through. I am out of underground belts. Oh boy. We'll grab more of those bad boys. Now, I'm announcing this uh, because it should, th this video is going to come out, yeah, long before the podcast. Uh, I wanted to announce the podcast guest that I have coming on the next cast, episode seven, which will be airing Tuesday, uh, what is that, May 7th at 11 a.m. Eastern, which is 3 p.m. UTC. Uh, the guest is going to be Galdok, none other than Galdok himself, creator of Galdok's Manufacturing, and he has also made some really awesome devlogs about his development process 
and we're gonna get to talking about some of the awesome nitty gritty stuff about factorial modding. And I'm really excited to have him on as a guest because he's very knowledgeable and skilled um, in the modding world and also making um, like the graphics for his mods. So there's a lot of cool stuff we're gonna get to talk about. Restock on all the things here. And can I do another inventory? Like, I just can't have enough inventory. I know it's a thousand packs, but whatever. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> Foundry is out. Woohoo! See you later, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. I don't actually think I need that. What I do need is circuits. Actually, I don't. I have 400 cir or 800 circuits. Boss. Boss sauce. Speaking of sauce, uh, I literally just posted this on the Cridania Discord, but... If you guys haven't seen the Hot Ones episode with Conan O'Brien, you need to go check that out. It is a riot. One of the most absurd 30 minutes of television I've ever seen in my life. In a good way. Highly recommend it. Okay, so we somehow ended up with route cocoons on both sides of the belt. I guess I switched sides at one point. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we'll go over here. As much as it is annoying, the reason I don't like to do what I just did is because it picks up the items on the belt and then they end up in your inventory, uh, which is the main reason I don't do it more is just because it's annoying to have that happen. But I like the way this looks a lot better. It's a lot smoother. For sure. Okay, so now we've got route cocoons and the moss. I don't even know what else I need at this point. Let's just start building stuff. We're gonna need water over here. I'll kind of build these buildings in this corner because it's pretty open down here. Uh, I guess pressurized water I forgot about. We need a pressure pump for that. I'm just gonna make a few of these. I use them frequently. Okay, so I need water, which has got to be everywhere. Yeah, I will just extend this one. Now, I've been playing a lot of Minecraft, modded Minecraft recently, and the thing that I miss the most is having multiple hotbars. In Minecraft, you're limited to one hotbar, and it only has nine slots, and it's just a pain in the butt. Let me tell ya. Okay, there we go. Ma, ba, 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 ba. Pressurized water, okay. Biomass. Where am I gonna get biomass? Can I just smush up a couple moon drops? Seven each? Actually, that might not be... I need 0.84 biomass a second for this. That's actually a decent amount of biomass. It is a non-zero amount. What about uh, wood? Yeah, we'll just use the wood over here. How close is that other biomass thingy for the fish? That's all the way up here, but I could just belt that biomass down. Maybe. Eh. No. We'll make a new one. Compost plant needs 100 steel. We are out of steel. Got it. Yeah, Minecraft inventory is also tiny. Weirdly enough, the inventory management in Minecraft doesn't bother me that much. Even though it feels like it should. Um, it's more the hotkeys that bother me, like, or the lack thereof, than the small inventory. Because I feel like that's part of the important progression, is the inventory size upgrades and backpacks and stuff like that. Where is my steel? 
Oh, way up here. Okay, do I need more tight? A little bit. Alright, where's the composter? Probably alien life, because, yeah. I think I said I was just gonna steal the Zogna, is that right? No, I'm stealing the plasmids, so that one's already done. I didn't need to make a biofactory. Whoops. And did we say we were gonna steal the substrate too? Or am I gonna make that fresh? I probably should have looked at this closer before we... <laughs> I think we said we were gonna steal the substrate. It's right here. Yeah, whoops. So, I definitely don't need the moss then. Okay, mistakes were made. Whatever. Let me just hoover all this up. That's not broken at least. Well, now we have moss up here for reasons that are, I guess, irrelevant. How much biomass does moss make? 4.3. Yeah, I think we'll just stick with the wood. Or is moss easier to make than the wood? These are the questions. 12 a minute. Okay, so 0. 0.2. But that's 1 to 5, so we're making like 0. 0.75 logs of forestry versus 0. 0.2 moss. Yeah. Although these are way smaller. I'll go with the wood. And then we want to get substrates, which are here, onto the belt. Do I need moss for the other steps? No, I do not. Okay. So, as much as I felt proud of myself for getting moss on the belt, I'm going to uh, make that not a thing anymore. So now instead of moss on the belt, I can have substrate. And I think I want to do something like this. Just avoid needing to make another power pole there. Okay. So we have the substrate, we have the plasmids, we have the super subcritical water. Um, by the way, I remember this was a few episodes ago now. I was talking about supercritical, subcritical, yada yada yada. What I was getting it confused with is um, super cooled. Super cooled water is when you cool it beneath its freezing point but it's not actually frozen. Like you can see this when you sometimes put a bottle of water in the freezer, but it's like distilled water or pure water and it doesn't have any nucleation sites for freezing. Um, and you can like pour the water out of the bottle and it instantly freezes into like a column of ice. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. <laughs> ah, it's cool. Anyway. So that's super cooled, which is why you'd think like, and I don't know, super heated. Did we talk about super heated? We talked about super critical, which is different than super heated. I don't know if super heated is also a term for when you go over the boiling point, because you can do both. Anyway, I digress. Wow, this was a lot of moss. I don't know why I made another chest, though. I don't need another chest. Okay. So there we go. That's that. And we need the reformer. Oh, that is... Right, a big boy. One big boy coming right up.
that. We get the composter. The wood. Give that some more space. Feed that in. Okay. And then we just need the manure. do it. Depolymerized organics. Bada bang bada boom. Wonderful. And now for the Sarcorus, we just need our uh, incubator. <laughs> okay. Solidified Sarcorus. Connect that up. And we need flora and substrate and plasmids, cotton gut. Okay, so the cotton guts need to come up here too. And the excess cotton guts are here. Of course, this is kind of a mess. Spaghetti junction. Let's come up here. And then I need to pin this. I've already forgotten all the ingredients. Okay, substrate comes up. I mean we're gonna need all this up there anyway. Hey stitches, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. These belts are so long with such expensive resources. On them, I'm just imagining the amount of plasmids we're wasting in the buffer here. It's so bad. Okay. Yeah, glad you could make it. Now, with any amount of luck, that'll do it. How are cotton guts? Oh, oh, we did something wrong. The pups are not getting... Oh, this is the bane of my existence. Oh my gosh. So something wrong is probably on this belt then. Yes, empty barrels. You know, one of these days... One of these days... Uh, Vrauk bits might be good biomass source. They might. The cocoons aren't, though. Um, but you're talking about the... I, I feel like the bio bits are actually not that good. They're only like two or three or four a piece. I get, like you said, if, if they're excess anyway, it's fine. But I seem to remember most of them don't... Let's see, we can find out if we can find all the pieces. Uh... Bones are three, meats three, skins three, guts three, lard, what was it? Control shift minus. Uh, looks like everything's three. Chitin is five. Um, guts three, yeah. Yeah, like you said, if, if you're backing up anyway, then that's fine. Hey, Fumbler X, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, glad you could catch a stream. 
Okay, well we've got that. Wow, that takes a lot of subcritical water for one crafting. This is not fast. Interesting. But then once that does 100, we get six sarcoruses out of it. And hopefully the cotton guts are actually running now. You better go catch them. Hardy, hardy, har. I'm going to take the extras so that we can run these buildings as well. Speed up the process a little bit. Yeah, so this is going to take probably a few minutes because we have to back up the extras on this belt before we'll start getting actual output. And that should have happened by now, but I had blacklist instead of whitelist on the inserter, so here we are. Not the first time that's happened, nor will it be the last. Enjoy the jazz music from the reproductive complex. Uh, sweet! Okay, so that's our choruses as soon as we get Cotton Guts. And that brings us to the final steps towards logistic science. I can't believe we're actually getting there. Felt like this day would never come. Um, let's work our way backwards here rather than forwards. I think in this case that's going to be better. So the research center needs animal samples and poor alien samples. The animal sample is all of the... We're essentially creating a chimera here. We've got all the pieces of animals plus some plasmids. Um, the alien sample, on the other hand, is a ground sample, which is dirt, soil, and clay, which is super easy. Rich clay is just ash, right? Ash and water, yep. And soil is literally just water. Uh, so that's really easy. I'm not really worried about the alien sample at all. I can fit that in pretty much anywhere. The only problem is the ash production, or where are we going to get ash from, that sort of question. Which is funny, because I'm, like, voiding it in other places. But, yeah, I'm going to check those off the list just because I can really fit that in wherever it needs to be fit in. So the other question then is the biological sample, because the ground sample is easy. The biological sample is bone meal, which is just steam cracked bones, Malaysia, petri dish, native flora, and some urea. Okay. So that we have the flora, the petri dish. Petri dish. The urea is over here, so I really just need the bone meal. And we also need bones for the animal sample. Okay. So we've got bones, not very many. Brains, we've got lots of. Titan, I don't need. Skin, medium. Guts, large. Meat. We're out of because we've been feeding our digosaurs meat. Or actually, wait. No, we've been feeding those guys brains. Those, they're, zo they're zombies. They eat brains to move. Meat is for the digosaurs. Um, so we're going to have to do some extra rendering for sure. and I need to get belts of this stuff out, which is difficult to say the least. Um, what goes on this belt? Those are batteries, okay. <laughs> so weird hearing you not on 2x speed. Yeah, my voice sounds so weird, right? Uh, yeah, I've definitely done that before with streamers as well, where you, you, you listen to them on YouTube and they sound very different when they're not talking extra fast.
I'm also a lot slower to play the game. What's up with that? I'm just gonna try to get these out of the way more. So we've got guts, guts and bones. Then we've got skin and meat. I guess that accomplished nothing. That's in bones, skin and meat, and then we need lard and brains. We haven't done lard yet. I did make an extra one here. I think this one was for lard. Um, okay, you know what we're gonna do? Cause this is what's really in the way here. I move this to the other side. And there we go. So now we have more space. Yeah, Cotton Gut Rendering helps with a lot of things that is on the plan, I think, when I looked at it before. Okay. Ah! Distracted with windows open. So that. So we needed brain and lard. Brain is here. Lard is here. Okay, I'm just gonna throw down... Did I not put text plates on my quick bar here? I did. So I don't forget. That is. Alright, and then we're gonna bring those... Actually, I'm gonna bring them up a little bit, so let's not go too far here. We have three spaces. Well, I think that will be a good place to end the episode. Getting ready to process all the animal bits and we'll need to do some rendering of potentially just cotton guts, potentially also augs for the lard, I think. Yeah, I don't, uh, cotton guts do sin lard. Oh, weird. A little fatty guys, I guess. I mean, I guess each one only has one lard a piece because you're processing five at a time, but you know. Anyway. All right, well, I'll call it an episode there. So as always, thank you all for watching. For those of you on Twitch, stick around. We're going to keep streaming. But uh, yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next episode.